Hello, my friends. A very good morning. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, may the Holy Spirit come upon you. You, my friend, even if you don't like me, even if you hate me, I still want you to be saved. I want the best for you. I want the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the same thing He has revealed to me. Because that's how we are. As long as we don't know God, we are ignorant. We are like a goat. Like a goat. A goat is very revolted. It is difficult, I would say almost impossible, almost impossible for you to dominate a goat, for you to tame a goat. But from a spiritual point of view, we know that when the person is a goat but is sincere, a person can be like a goat, but if they are sincere, there's no problem. God will still reveal Himself to them, I'm sure. He gives them an opportunity. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You know that Jesus, when He spoke to the rich young man to sell all of His possessions and to follow Him, the rich young man got very sad because he had many properties. And he left Jesus and went away to live his life. And then we also saw the case of the rich man from the story of Lazarus. That rich man, when he died, he went straight to hell. His soul was sought by the devil himself. Just as the angels of God come to carry the soul of those who die, those who die serving the Lord. So, the devil also has his demons who come to take the soul of those who belong to him, those who served him here on earth. And Jesus then speaks about the rich man. And it's important for you to understand this because sometimes you say things that you don't know, such as, Bishop, sell everything and give to the poor. Well, I'm giving all that I have. I'm not just giving a little bit. I'm giving everything. Everything that God has given me, I am passing on to people. So, I want you to know that Jesus said like this. He said, I say to you that it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And then he reaffirms that saying, and again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Of course, that Jesus is not talking about here the eye of the needle that is used for sewing. It's not that type of needle. The eye of the needle here, it's about a small door, a very small door that would still fit, people would still fit in there to pass through. The merchants you'd use during the night. You know, back then, the cities at night, they were locked up, they were closed. So they would leave just a small door for the merchants to come one by one there. So that small door was called the eye of a needle. And for a camel to go through that, you can imagine. The camel would have to get on its knee. It was a serious problem, very difficult. So Jesus was not saying that it was impossible. He was saying that it was hard, very hard. And why is it hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God? And it's not just the, the rich, the poor as well. You who are poor and perhaps you think, oh, at least I have this advantage. I am poor, so I'm going to heaven. No, it's not that, my friend. We only enter the kingdom of heaven through faith. 
Faith in the word of God. A faith that is living in the living God. That faith that creates within us a hope. A hope of one day we finally enter the kingdom of our Creator. And this faith, this faith, not everybody has it. Why? Because normally people are very emotional, for example. People are very emotional and they live based on their heart. So they make decisions based upon their five senses, the five senses of the heart, the soul. What their eyes can see, what their nose can smell, their taste buds, their hearing, the touch. So the five senses of the soul make the person come to make decisions upon that, which means, in, in other words, they have to see in order to believe. This is the law of the world, the law of the rich man. So the rich here is not just the rich that has money. Rich is the proud one, is that person who is poor, very poor, very poor, but very proud, full of pride and full of themselves that think that they are always right and so on and so on and nobody is able to change their mind. So this person who is proud, full of selfishness, that doesn't have anything, but they end up becoming a rich person that is difficult to enter the kingdom of heaven because they don't submit to a faith in the living God, in the invisible God. Faith, it's through faith that we are saved. It's through faith that we are justified before God. It's by faith that we become deserving before God. And how is this faith? Let me try to explain this to you who still haven't had this opportunity to be gifted, to be contemplated, to receive the prize of this glorious faith. So, for example, a person who lives their life without depending on God, without faith, without anything. So they live their life, but they still have faith. They have faith. So, for example, they have faith to play the lottery. So there is a prize there, 50 million, 200 million. And the person is there every week using their faith to win the lottery. Do they see the prize? No, they don't see the prize. They imagine the prize, isn't it? Or oh, if I won, I will buy this, I will do that and the other. So they have faith in something that they do not see, that they do not feel, and they can't touch. And so is God. However, God that we can see, touch or feel, He has His word. He gives the guarantee of His word. He says, the word that comes out of my mouth will not return to me void. Will not return to me void. So whoever believes in God believes in this word. They have faith in this word. They hope on this word. They trust in this word. They wait on this word. They have hope that this word will one day be materialized in their life. Why? This is called faith. The unbelievers, they want to see in order to believe. But those who believe in God, in the living God, they believe in what they cannot see. They wait on something they can't see. They have the assurance of something that is invisible. But this is what is inside of them. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of faith, gave them this faith. So the Bible says in the book of James that God gave faith to the poor because the poor, they have nothing. They have nothing. 
but God contemplates the poor with faith. So you can find, you can see more poor people with faith than rich people with faith, because the rich people only have faith in their money, in their power. That's all, nothing else. But the fact is that, my dear friend, this faith, this faith in the living God, in the invisible, untouchable God, this faith in the God that you cannot feel, this faith you have because of His Word. You have faith in reality, in His Word. When you have faith in His Word and you trust in His Word, then the person has a faith that pleases God and makes the impossible possible. Did you understand, my friend? So, the person who does not have faith in God, but they have faith, they have faith in the lottery, they have faith that their marriage is going to work, they have faith that their life is going to change, they have faith in their own human ability, in their profession, they have faith in what they see and feel, but they have a faith for example, in the lottery. They don't see the lottery. They don't see the money. They only see or they have the expectation. They have that expectation. If I win, the other one won, so why can't I? So they have this type of faith. But there is nothing that proves, that guarantees that they will win. And usually they don't win. Because we know that in the lottery, the lottery, it's for one or two people that actually win. And, and it's very, amongst millions that play, only one wins. So let's understand the Word of God. Let's understand God. When we speak of believing God, having faith in God, putting faith in His Word, pay attention. Whoever believes in the Word of God, obeys. Whoever believes, obeys. Whoever does not believe, disobeys. That's how it works. Whoever believes in the Word of God is a sheep. Whoever does not believe in the Word of God, disobeys. It's a goat. It's stubborn. Stubborn. Difficult. Untamable. It's the goat. Is it possible for a person to believe in God without them having to take the action of obedience to His Word. No, it's not possible. It's pointless for you to say, Oh, I believe in God, but I believe my way. I don't have to be in a church or have a religion. I don't need any of that. Well, it's okay. So, why did Jesus establish the church then? Why did He establish the church? Was it to decorate the planet? Is that what it's for? Or was it to bring together those who are afflicted, those who have faith in Him, those who believe in His Word, to bring together people in one spirit, in one faith, to bring them together before the altar, and there they hear His Holy Word, and there they manifest their belief, their faith, to have intimacy with God, to have a communion with God there. So the person who says, or oh, the unchurched people, who are perhaps in a church before and now they don't go to church anymore, you are wasting your time saying that you believe in God. It's better not to believe because this belief that you have is good for nothing. It's not going to bring you any benefit because you are not making any effort. Oh, but I believe in God. I believe, I believe. Okay. But whoever believes obeys and whoever does not believe disobeys. That's clear. So, how can we believe in a God who is invisible without seeing, without touching, without feeling Him, believing in His Word? Because God is the Word. God is the living Word. And this Word then is materialized in the life of those who believe. So, whoever believes, obeys the Word, and they reap the benefits from this Word, which means the Word of God, or God Himself, is materialized in the life of those who believe in the Word, who is God. Did you understand, my friend? Of course, I know that 
you who have the Holy Spirit, you understand it clearly. There is no doubt whatsoever. But whoever does not have the Spirit of God, it's difficult for them to understand. They are stubborn and they still want to argue, to discuss. They still want to make their will prevail, their belief. Inverted brackets here. Saying that... Oh, but the person says, Ah, but I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues. So see the fruits of your life. Look within yourself, my friend. Let's make an examination, a deep examination. You say you have the Holy Spirit. So how are you within you? How are you on the inside? You don't have to tell anybody. You don't have to say. But you know, if you are a person who lives bitterly, you are someone who lives in the world of fantasies. You are a person whose goal in life is to satisfy your personal desires, your lusts, your flesh. You think that having money, you're going to have everything. You think that you believe that if you conquer a established financial life, then your life will be wonderful. But Jesus is saying it's here to the rich. It's difficult, almost impossible, almost impossible for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. For this reason, because they trust in their wealth. And even though trusting in their wealth, they have no peace. Because their wealth gives them no peace, no tranquility. It gives them no family, no true family. Isn't it true? And I say this with assurance, with authority, because I have a family. Thank God. I have my wife. My wife has me. And we live for one another with this peace. And we can say of what is, it is to have a family. We can say what it is to have a marriage. We can teach. We can give advice because we are going to be married now for 51 years. So we have the Holy Spirit because the result of His presence inside of us is visible in our home, in our house. Our house is a little piece of heaven. And it has to be. Whoever has the Holy Spirit has to have a piece of heaven at home. Or within themselves, at least. Even if the husband is not converted, the son, the daughter, the wife, and so on. But you, within you, you have peace. You have peace. And there is also joy. I'm sorry, when we laugh like this, I laugh of joy, of happiness, because when I speak of the Word of God, when I drink from this Word, we feel like laughing. We are not mocking anybody here. We are not making fun of anyone. Of anyone. On the contrary, we are here daily trying, trying to lead you to the knowledge of the word that brings this to us. The same word that has brought to my life, to my family, this happiness, this peace, this life, this word is available for you who are watching me right now. Whatever is the situation you are facing in life, whether you are the worst sinner on the planet, the word is for you as well, as much as it is for me. I was a goat. Today I am a sheep. And you also. Perhaps you are a goat still. But you can also become a sheep. If you hear and say yes to the word of the Lord Jesus. Jesus said like this. Look how magnificent. How wonderful. Magnificent indeed. It is the Holy Spirit who gives life, which means He gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words, look at what Jesus is saying. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. 
spirit and life. I'm going to leave this text here for you to meditate upon, okay? And tomorrow we are going to be back here. Tonight, you who have problems in your love life, problems in your marriage, you who have problems that you can't work with anybody, no relationship works with no man, with no woman, you've gotten married many times and you are still seeking and seeking. Do you know why this is happening in your love life? Because you have not placed, you haven't yet based, you never actually based up until today your life upon the Word of God. Because if you put your mind, not your heart, not your feelings, but your mind upon the Word of God, you are going to break through. You are going to break through because the Word of God will lead you to the green pastures. You are going to be a sheep from the flock of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tonight at 8 p.m., Christiani and Renato will be here in the Temple of Solomon and in any universal church of the Kingdom of God there will always be a couple, a pastor and his wife, passing on to you that experiences and teaching you how to live by faith in the Word of God. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.